I pride myself on putting as much real world information and real, working network, real world networking scenarios in my courses as I possibly can. And I've definitely got some of that here for you because I tell you, the most important piece of real world networking information in this entire course is in this video. I'm going to show you something that can help. Oh, wow, it's going to save you a lot of heartache if a certain situation ever pops up. And I will show you exactly what I'm talking about and exactly how to handle it after we talk about this advertising process for just a minute or two and we'll see the CRN in action on the switches as well. I want to talk to you about these VTP advertisements because we've mentioned them a couple of times in passing and the real key with advertisements is that they are multicast. They are not going to one device in particular. They're not going to everybody like a broadcast would. They're multicast. They're going to a group and that group really is the switches that that switch is trunking with. Because if we think about the name VLAN trunking protocol, who needs those advertisements? A device with VLANs that is trunking. Yeah, so it's VTP. And it makes sense. The only devices that need the advertisements are switches that are on the, are on the other end of trunks. Printers don't need them. Routers don't need them. Hosts don't need them. Servers don't need them. So we're not going to send them. Those VTP ads only go across trunks. Now, those advertisements carry a configuration revision number, a CRN, that we've seen in show VTP status so far. I believe it just says configuration revisions, exact same thing. And what happens is these enable the VTP enabled switches to make sure they have the latest VTP info and that their neighbor, when they receive an ad from a neighbor, this gives them a chance to check and say, OK, is this really the most up to date information? Because just because a downstream switch tells you something, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the latest information. And we don't want to switch receiving a VTP ad and then overriding its current database for old information. So that's where the CRN comes in. It's the subset advertisement that we want to concern ourselves with here now. It's one specific VTP ad type. There are others, and we are saving those for your NP studies and future studies. They're not part of the CCNA. But these subset ads go out anytime there's a change in the VLAN landscape. And as you'd expect, that covers just about anything, an addition, a deletion, a rename, anything like that. There's this immediate notification to the switches that that particular switch is trunking with. In this walkthrough, switch one and switch two, they start with a revision number of two. And the, the creation of VLAN 300 on switch one, it actually triggers two events. And it's very important to note the order of these two events. The first thing that happens is the switch that the VLAN's created on, in this case, switch one, it increments its own CRN first. So it would increment that number to three. Then it sends the VTP subset advertisement, and that revision number would be three, the one that's on switch one right now. Switch two gets it, has its own configuration revision number of two, it receives the ad, looks at the CRN, and says it's three. Oh, OK, well, that's higher. Because if the advertisement, the incoming advertisement, has a CRN that is higher than that of the receiving switch, then the ad is accepted, and the VTP database is overwritten, the VLAN database, and then the receiving switch increments its own revision number. So I just want to walk through those steps one more time, because the order is very important. We created a VLAN on switch one. The CRN is incremented. Then the advertisement is sent out. The advertisement is received. The CRN is compared. If the CRN of the incoming message, the incoming ad is higher, then it's accepted. And then the switch overwrites its own database with the information in that VTP ad and then increments its own revision number. Whew, that's a lot going on. So let's actually see this going on in person. Let's see this on our switches. And we're on switch three, so that's a good place to start. And let's see, a couple of different places here to look for the config revision number. If you see this feature VLAN information when you run show VTP status, then this is where you'll find the config revision number. There's only one. So it's set at 11 right now. We expect to see something very similar on our other switches. And we've got switch two here. And you can see the config revision number there is 11 and You can see it's 11 here as well. So we will create a VLAN on switch one. And I believe we did one during the break. It was 222. So we'll go with 333 here. 
And that's it, not even gonna put any ports in it, we're just gonna create it. And let's run show VTP status again. And you can see the local config revision number has already incremented to 12. All that stuff that we spent a couple of minutes talking about, that happens at lightning speed. So we've got this config revision number of 12. We're all set there. Let's go down and check the config number here. And you can see that it's 12 right under running VTB1. And let's run a show VLAN brief here. And we see VLAN 333 right there in the middle. And let's go over to our net last one. Let's see if our config revision number has incremented. It has indeed. There it is at 12. And we'll do a quick show VLAN brief. And there it is, VLAN 333, right in the middle. So you see the CRN in effect. And you know, it's very simple stuff. And the thing is, this is one of the many things in networking that works so flawlessly and so well that we tend not to think about it a whole lot. Of course, for a certification exam, we've got to think about it a little bit. But it also leads to the situation that we're about to address. And that is taking a switch from another site and putting it into another production network. You have to be absolutely sure to set the CRN to zero in this particular scenario, or you're going, you're going to have a huge mess on your hands. Now, personally, what I like to do is absolutely initialize a switch. And actually, as a bonus, I'm going to show you that in the very next video. We're actually going to do it. And I'll show you the two commands. It's very simple stuff, definitely not something to practice at work, believe me. But uh, it makes sure that everything is gone from a switch. But what happens is, is you know, client site goes down, usually, you know, middle of the night, thing like that, and a switch is down. And you don't have another one to go in. There's no other switch there. And you're racking your brains trying to think, you know, where in the world can I get a switch? And you think, hey, we've got a Cisco practice lab back at the office. And yes, this did really happen. Didn't happen to me, but we did have a practice lab there. And that's not the first time a router or a switch has been torn out of a practice lab somewhere and put into a production network just as a stopgap. Well, here's the kind of thing that can happen, though, if we're not watching our switches. And I'll show you the drawing here in a moment. But we have a simple three switch network, two clients, one server. Switch two is sending an advertisement with CRN 300. And you can see the VLANs in question, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, the non-default VLANs being advertised. And you know, everything's just perfectly fine. But let's say all three switches at this point have a config revision number of 300. So everything's fine until a switch that was at another location and in another network is brought to that client site and put in the CCNP domain, put into that domain. But the problem is the CRN on that switch is 500 and this switch only knows about one VLAN. It's the default VLAN. And if you're thinking, what are the odds the VTP domain would be the same? It happens. It happened to at least one person. So uh, what happens is this, you know, switch four would come around and say, hey, I'm part of the CCNP domain too. And the thing is, with that config revision number of 500, if it's advertising out, hey, the only, def only VLANs that exist are the default VLANs, what are switches one and three going to do? They're going to accept the ad, and they're going to overwrite every single non-default VLAN they have. And then switch two is going to find out about that, and the non-default VLANs will be gone from there too. Ugh, that's not good. Now, switch four in that case doesn't even have to be a VTP server to totally ruin things. Because if a client, while a client I should say, we know the client generally spends its time listening for VTP ads and then forwarding them. But when it comes online, it sends one advertisement. It's a full summary ad. And that is enough to cause that entire situation. So what you've got to be careful about is getting that CRN set to zero before it's inserted into the new network. Now, just bouncing the switch is not enough because the CRN is kept in NVRAM. So you can bounce that switch all you want to. When it comes back up, that CRN is going to be the same. Cisco theory holds that there are two ways to ensure the CRN is set to zero. The first one is that the VTP domain name should be changed to a non-existent domain, not just another one, but a non-existent one in that network, and then change it back to the original name. You can also change the VTP mode from server to transparent and then back to server. 
Hmm, okay. Those sound interesting. When we come back, we're going to try both of those on the live switches, and then I'll show you how to totally initialize a switch because there's one command you probably know and one you might not. And we'll be right back with that next. <laughs> 